Give me a head with hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shining, gleaming, streaming, flaxen, waxen hair. Hey everyone, thank you for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. It's Monday, so we are answering viewer questions today. And on our Why Do We Have Warts video, Sahane, Elise, and the Gaming Wookiee all had questions about hair. Different types, and why do some people have more than others, and why do we even need it? Firstly, hair is a natural part of being human. We tend to associate it with our head, face, armpits, pubic regions, and legs. But it's actually everywhere, on our whole body. We like to think of ourselves as a naked ape, but we actually have the same number of hairs on our body as a chimpanzee, or around five million hairs. Before you ask, hair and fur, they're the same thing. You and your fuzzy dog or cat all have the hair made of the same stuff, keratin. Your skin is made of layers, the epidermis, then the dermis underneath. And in the dermis, cells are constantly dividing, and the older cells are pushed out of the hair follicles, creating hair all the time. On chimpanzees, hair protects skin from the sun and provides warmth. When you take into account thermoregulation or keeping your body temperature constant, hair was a way to keep that body warmth in naturally, so you had to do less work. Though in modern humans, it still protects our head from the sun's rays and allows sweat to travel along the hair shafts and evaporate, which cools us down, it does not keep our bodies that warm anymore, although our head might be a different story. There are many different types of hair. Fetuses in the womb grow hair called lanugo, though it usually recedes from the body before birth, though it doesn't always. A comforting reminder of our primate history, perhaps? After birth, we humans grow soft, fine, unpigmented vellus hair all over our bodies, though thicker, pigmented hair on the head, eyebrows, eyelashes, and so on is all called terminal hair. During puberty, some of the vellus hair transitions to terminal or androgen hair, named for the sex hormones that cause them. On the face and chest for men, and in the armpits and pubic regions for both men and women, you see that terminal hair. What hair you get depends a lot on your genes. A 2009 Cambridge study found the genes for hair were 85 to 95 percent inherited, though some can be affected by the environment. Hair curls for two reasons. First, an asymmetrical or oval-shaped follicle will force a curvy hair to emerge. Circular follicles produce straight hair, on the other hand. But a specific cellular receptor called epidermal growth factor receptor regulates the growth of your hair. If the EGFR puts too much keratin on one side of your hair shaft as it grows, it's gonna come out curly. Hair is a holdover from our ancient ancestors. As we evolved, our genes mutated, and hair thinned on some parts of our body. But why in some places and not others is actually an evolutionary mystery. Perhaps hair lessened for social interaction so that we could better see each other's eyes and face. Or as we became more upright and mobile, evolution favored those with just enough to reduce skin-on-skin -skin friction in pubic regions and armpits. Or perhaps ancient humans spent more time in the water and hair wasn't as useful there except on the exposed parts of your head. Perhaps hair remains in the pubic region, similar to eyes, heads, nose, and ear hair, to block dirt and other deuterium from the genitalia, or to keep UV rays away from vulnerable sex organs. Or maybe it allows pheromones to spread from the body for mating. The Economist writes that perhaps mature women are more visibly hairless on average because at some point hairlessness was selected by men as a sexually attractive trait. A similar theory as to why human males have the largest average penis size of all primates. Again. We don't exactly know. These are all just theories. What we do know is maintaining some but not all body hair may be due to parasite detection. A study from England's University of Sheffield found that people with more body hair could detect bed bugs more quickly than those with less body hair. Though by tracing the evolution of lice alongside humans, scientists did determine that we started trying clothing on more than 170,000 years ago, which was great for cooler temperatures of the coming ice age and when we started to move from Africa into Europe, you know, more clothing though, like thicker hair, means more parasites. So, back at square one. Look, science can't answer everything. Sometimes we have to leave some stuff for philosophers, you know? Wisecrack has a video that I'm pretty sure you're gonna love, especially if you play Pokemon or video games, or you're alive in any way, pondering whether animals should have rights of their own. It's reasonable to suggest that animals and humans should not share the same rights. The right to vote, for instance, would be wasted on a Pikachu. But is it not also wasted on people who are incapable of making rational choices? Check out Wisecrack over on YouTube and make sure that you subscribe for more D-News right here every day. <laughs>